The Real Deals are on the air now. And now, live from the Swords of St. Michael Studios, it's The Real Deals, Kenneth at Fair Rose Deal. Happy Labor Day! And we're not laboring. How do you like that? It's yeah, it's Sunday. We're not supposed to labor That's true. today. That's true. It's not day rest, you guys. I yeah. hope you guys are all resting and enjoying. We just we thought we'd do like a little test show and thought we'd do like mm-hmm. a viewer's choice that sort of thing. So. <laughs> yeah, that's a great idea. Yeah, just yeah. Like, let's hear from the uh, the chats in case anybody in finds comments. us tonight. If not, we've got plenty of stuff to talk about. <laughs> We're kind of Ken popping always. up all over like a pirate radio station. Ken and can we always find something goofy to do. So. <laughs> Oh my gosh! So hello to everybody. Let's see who's all in here because I can't miss this configuration. Mm-hmm. So far, we just see. See, this is the thing about. Uh, oh my goodness! Three uh, of them unannounced. Jennifer from Alex in. Yeah. Yes, and hopefully, you know, it's okay if you want to stay hidden. If you want to post under a pseudonym or whatever, you can always, you know, just give us a little shout and let us know whatever your question is, that kind of thing. I don't know. Maybe we should go popping over the other one. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why? Uh, Why? So we can catch people off guard. <laughs> yeah, you said you wanted to run a test show on YouTube. Oh, that's true. That defeats the purpose. Well, it worked. <laughs> oh, oh, my gosh. Yeah, we're in it for the full hour tonight, folks, no matter where we finish it. Oh, so in other words, you're telling everybody on YouTube you would either go to Facebook to find your little showmates. Well, so I don't bad. Everybody's so too bad. busy watching something on TV, I guess, right now, aren't they? Yeah. Oh, it's just, it's, just, it's just us and Jennifer in there. No, that's the chat room for you. Okay. We will uh, We'll go ahead and do our St. Michael prayer. Does that sound like a plan? That sounds like a plan. Sounds like a plan. Right? Yeah. And the Father, and the Son, Holy Spirit, Amen. St. Michael, the Archangel, the fan us in battle, be our protection against the malice and the snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, will be humbly praying, O Prince of the Heavenly Host. By the divine powers of God, cast into hell, Satan, and all the other evil spirits who roam through the world, sick and ruin the souls. Amen. And Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Amen. Most sick at heart, Jesus, have mercy on us, on us all. Amen. St. Michael has been terribly overused in this uh, this work that we do, except that it's used by con artists, and, and, and uh, very often people misrepresenting mm-hmm. themselves. So if you see the name St. Michael, it doesn't mean we're associated with it. Uh, you know, when I looked that name up in 2007, um, when we started it, um, I think I only found a, a a squadron from the 1940s called the Sword of St. Michael. Mm-hmm. And then St. Michael came up under somebody else who I don't want to mention, a fake brother. Yeah. Um, but um, that's it. Now it's like everybody's using it. There's some guy, or uh, I don't know. We're gonna do. We'll have to do a whole show about that and just give a profile. You know, it's funny about when fakes are out there. You can hang them by their own words. Their posts. You can use archive.org and and show that they only been around since 2006 as a fake priest and bishop. When it, and they keep telling about their organization's been around since uh, 15 years ago. Do the math. That's a. That's uh. It's uh, barely what 12 years or. For yeah. that, and that, and that was said uh, two years ago. Um, so we'll move on to this thing, just 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 like a regular show. The meme of the week. Well, this is actually the second meme this week, and that is travels thousands of miles to find a ghost. Runs when they think there's a ghost. That's for sure, isn't it? Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's like the old Casper thing. I should have had a clip of that. You should. Where's our multimedia guy, Iggy? I know. Where is he, Mr. Pop Boy? Yeah. He's only sitting right over there. You can see where my arm is. Too funny. Oh, yeah. Five <laughs> people are watching. I wish I knew who you were. I could say hi. We did have people say that they were going to join us from Australia tonight. And I think there was one that might pop in from Poland. And Australian there was somebody, yeah, somebody might join us from Portugal. So if you're out there, hmm. I'm so glad you joined. Amen. Hi, Orion. Hey, thanks so much for joining us, Mr. Gillette. I love that name. Gillette, Orion, Gillette, Gillette. Gillette. Oh, yes, G- yes, yes, yes. Yes, there was a vocal coach named Jim Gillette from some oh, really? Lester and Heard band. I used to listen to his tapes in the 80s <laughs> so I could practice my uh, <laughs> hair metal band scales in the car on the cassette. Yeah. You know, and you go up the, you know, the high C or whatever. 
But that, that's where his name is Jim Gillette. That's like the first and the last time I heard the last name Gillette in there. Besides the razor. You know, so. We're going to do some uh, some things here tonight. Yeah, we're just Which uh, one do you telling do first? Jen. We're going to do viewer's choice here in a few minutes. Mm -hmm. we got a few things we're going to blather on about. So if you want to go ahead and pop your questions, I've got my handy dandy little pen right here. So I'm taking notes and stuff about some of the things that... We were talking about earlier in the week that we just kind of wanted to cover. And also, mm -hmm. because we're so swamped right now, there's quite a few things coming up in cases. And it kind of seems that they're cyclical and they go around and around and around. So we kind of wanted to address them, especially because we have people that really want referrals desperately. And in mm -hmm. order to refer them to somebody, we have to have some sort of history with those people. We have to have some sort of basis of a relationship. So we're going to talk about relationship. We're going to talk about referrals. And mm -hmm. also, oh my gosh, we got to talk about fods, fronies, and lizards because they all come out of the same crack hole mm -hmm. in the ground. You know, <coughs> there they come. Mm -hmm. You know, it's light of day. Come get some Let's Play. Yeah. So we're going to talk a little bit about that. We're not going to name names or disparage anybody because as somebody was so obviously pointing out today ken remember it's like somebody was saying oh my gosh hi chris thompson hi tony hi michael good to see you yes it's a sunday surprise <laughs> but, but somebody pointed out that i had posted something that was quite judgmental and so we're going to talk about w exactly what is judgmental so i don't want you guys to go anywhere i would love it if you guys could give us some feedback we need feedback on sound mm -hmm. on stream quality and if you have some questions so we can get to all your questions tonight within the next hour and 15 minutes i promise we'll get to them yeah um, i think it's supposed to be high def tonight yeah i think so i think so because you know ken's mm -hmm. trying some so stuff he's tweaking some stuff and we're really trying hard guys mm -hmm. good to see you chris thompson yeah i can if you if Hi, you don't Bernard, mind brother ofs sorry oh good to probably uh, yeah keep acknowledging i'm gonna tell me why it's I can always look, good right? to see people yeah and he's <laughs> trying to run the board okay you guys when you guys see like the little things pop up on the screen that goes bing bing he's sitting there at the control board we do not have not yet anyway I mean, who knows we could in the future but we don't have like a tech person a sound person an effects mm -hmm. person or somebody sitting at the board running stuff off you know ken's got to sit there and do like the five finger thing on the on the keyboard so yeah it's all Make it's it all ten, good our two fingers I yes mm -hmm. precisely so. i saw dan rather do that once on some behind the scenes a long time ago and i go dan rather just like me <laughs> just on dan that rather. though because i don't like mm -hmm. i don't like most of those guys I'm gonna def I'm gonna define it, and then you can <clears throat> we can both go back so and forth on that. Start, what are we gonna it, start with here? Well, since it is hot, oh, and I'm uh, I'm gonna talk about some. Uh, uh, it's hot. Uh, no, the topic is hot. <laughs> the topic is hot. No, it's always hot. I'm trying to you. figure what it's hot. It's hot. It's not. It's hot. It's hot. It's hot. You know, means it's 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 live and it's recent. You know. That. Yes, 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 yes. So, Annette, we put uh, blogs up about this before. This not a vlog with a V, and the uh, way it it's really defined as uh well what people are misquoting the bible judge not and it goes on down the line and if they didn't pay attention to anything but the first line is what they do judge not yes. okay here's what judgment is yeah let's judgment talk is exactly you see judgment. you see my hair mm -hmm. or tonight you know acdc t-shirt and you go he's not very holy and pious i don't believe he could be a demonologist or work with exorcists fact fact is judge if I would give something like a judgment, that's a judgment. That's assuming that I do drugs and I'm an alcoholic or I'm a hippie. Well, guess what? I never did drugs. Never was interested in it. I walked a beat of a different drummer my whole life, you know? You still I do. got my head shaved when I was a kid by my dad who gave me crew cuts all the time. And this is kind of like still still like it this way. And, I, you know, my wife likes it too. So there we go. But, no, judgmental is, is when you're not judging uh, the person. You're judging the sin. See, since we have the Ten Commandments in the Bible, if this guy's a murderer, you can say he's a murderer. It doesn't make you judgmental. He's been proven to be a murderer. It doesn't mean you can gossip about venial sins like, oh, yeah, she's got a whole bunch of boyfriends, that married woman. Oh, over here, her daughter, she had an abortion. You know, even that. In that's gossip. That's yeah. not judgmental. That's right. See, and that's what we have to understand, kids. When we sit there and share that information that's called gossip which could be very damaging to somebody's character which we would never choose to do and unless there's certain circumstances is it necessary yeah. in other words is this going to help someone is this going to benefit someone is this going to prevent somebody else from harm is this you know absolutely entirely important to somebody that they have this information that's what ken's talking about this, this sharing of information is something that 
somebody feels so important that it must be shared. That's not going to be anything considered judging. Now, let's just say, Ken, you were saying, oh, my gosh, she had an abortion. What a slut. How mm-hmm. does he know the intention of how she got pregnant? That's yeah. a judgmental statement because you're judging the circumstances under which she had the abortion. Maybe she wasn't a slut. Maybe she was in love and she believed she was going to get married and he dumped her. Oh, yeah, that Maybe he was married already and couldn't marry her. And she was so ashamed. See, we don't, we cannot judge another's heart. And that's what we have to be very, very careful about is that when we attempt to judge the intentions of people's hearts, we're going to get judged the same way. Oh, that's so, so true. That says that in the Bible, too. But um, that's James 3, not. though, like you were saying, an olive will not fall from a fig tree, nor a fig fall from an olive tree. A fig will fall from an olive tree. And to call that fig an olive that fell off the fig tree is deceitful. It's a lie. And potentially, mm-hmm. geez, if somebody was allergic to olives or, or, or figs and you told them, oh, yeah, that fig is an olive and they ate it. Hmm. I, I don't even know what a fig is. <laughs> a fig is a fruit, honey. Haven't you ever had oh, a fig so is, I thought a fig was just a fig oh like a gosh. leaf. Didn't Adam and Eve make cover their privates up with fig leaves or something? Well, I, that'd be funny if they did. I think leaves. I remember that. Oh my gosh! <laughs> Jesus curses the fig tree. Yeah, well, I, had, I think I'd curse oh it too. Oh my gosh! Yeah, no, no wonder why it's bad fruit. Yeah, and you know, yeah. I think that we have to be, and we usually are very, very, very careful with the kind of information that we share, folks. So you know, if I had unintentionally offended anybody, that was never, ever, ever, you know, our intention today. Uh, the whole point already? of any kind of post that I would make is I firmly believe that we are under authority. God orders us under the authority of our government, uh, under our mayor, you know, under the city council. Whoever is in charge of us, we're under authority. We follow that authority. So Mm -hmm. consequently, you know, it's important for us to be able to know who's in authority and what they're doing. And we saw something that was glaringly not true. And Mm -hmm. I do not believe in getting in political discussions. We discussed religion. That's what we like to discuss. Mm-hmm. I do support Church our military. Warfare, we both support our military. You know, yeah. Ken's dad was in the military. My dad was mm-hmm. in the military. We come from, like, long lines. He's yeah, got nuns an and priests. And We've got some nuns and lots of military people. So if you ever see us post to something about the military, you know what? We're not going to make it about who's president, who's not president. The military, though, I stand up for them. Yeah, just and because we don't like the way someone did stuff, regardless of, of, of political affiliation, doesn't mean we're starting a political debate because we're just talking about, you know, this this clumsy accident that was uh, resulted, that resulted in the death of 27 uh, servicemen, sailors on uh, um, an aircraft carrier, and, uh, and suddenly it turns into this Trump thing, and, you know, and it's, uh, I don't know. But we're trying to stay away from... Even when mm-hmm. we speak truth, you know, just because it'll go into politics. I exactly. used to have a policy. We, I wouldn't talk about always, abortion. We don't want I'm so fed people up with abortion. offended or upset. We want to make sure that whatever we share is educational, it's positive, it's uplifting. Mm-hmm. I do think, though, when people are being fed a mass of lies, I get about that close to just saying, you know, would you stop sharing this with me because I know otherwise and I've, I've seen paperwork. I've mm-hmm. talked to people, firsthand witnesses. And so, you know, I had to post something, you know, about an incident my father almost died in. And I was really just not listening to somebody that I know was not a hero be made, you know, king of the mountain for a whole week. So I'm over it till next year. I promise I won't post anymore. So let's get onward and upward to all these positive things we want to talk about tonight. Is that 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 funeral going to go on again next year at the same time? (laughs) I wouldn't doubt it. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, my gosh. No, you know, and, and, and last thing on judgment, too. Uh, you know, I have a right to not like a president based on their policies. You know, if I don't like, I didn't like Barack Obama, I mean, put anybody else in there. You, you know, uh, I don't care what color they are. If they're an idiot, they're an idiot. It doesn't have anything to do with color. If people don't like me, it doesn't make them a white hater or whatever, or anything like that, or um, a Catholic hater. So it's like that's name calling, and that is judgmental to assume that someone is prejudiced just because you don't like the last president. Had nothing to do with that. 
I mean, there's yes. a lot of presidential candidates. Uh, Alan Keyes, uh, you know, my parents, we voted for uh, Alan Keyes in the one election, and uh, Ben Carson would have made a great president, too. He's, kinda, he's rather mellow, but that man's yes. a genius. Mm-hmm. Heck, even, uh, I would probably even vote for Denzel Washington. What the heck? <laughs> But neither of them, I uh, know for sure, is, are not uh, communists. I do not want communists running the country. Communists are still our enemies. So there, I said it. Yeah, it's going that way. Okay, so let's change topic. Let's get on the happy, 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 positive <laughs> high, hope. dude. <laughs> All okay, right. it's a l- kind of a commentary here. Uh, last week's show uh, was part two of the one talking about uh, child spirit. Is it oh, a child spirit? Right. Fun so we're, that? yeah, we're going to cover a couple things mm-hmm. that you know we kind of you know didn't like totally polish off. So. Yeah, we didn't really give a final thought on that, and this kind of brings up what the final thought is, because someone watched two episodes, apparently, commented on both of them, mm-hmm. and they say, keep in mind, just because someone, some sees or has an experience with unclean spirits does not mean it is the start of a full-blown infestation. The experience can be a warming, be, a warning, sorry, warning, <laughs> I'm larking that up a little bit. <laughs> you marked it oh, up bad. Oh, a warning because of the current li- uh, because of their current lifestyle that mm-hmm. needs a change. Well, all of them are. Anytime you see early stage of an infestation, it's always a warning. It's like you're starting to get physical effects, like symptoms of diabetes. It means you're going to start having to change your diet. I mean, this is uh, one of those things that we already covered in one video or another, if not uh, several, in addition to the last two. Sometimes they appear of our because of our mental state of being well we talked about that too if they're particularly had changes in their life and they're feeling stressed out we had it on a checklist like when what happened around the time did it appear because we were trying to discern whether or mm-hmm. not it was evil or good exactly feelings are hopeless desperateness remember what we said we said that if a person is in despair that a demonic might pretend to be that dead relative to suck them in they always like to take advantage of your ill feelings you know if you're mad at somebody or whatever Anything, they jump on it as soon as you have feelings and emotions in a way. And that's why you got to pray for your friends who are mourning the loss of a loved one. Example would be losing a spell and spirit a child. Let me just tell people, when you listen to our show, don't comment until you listen to both, because I like to know that people are listening to both shows instead of listening to a portion and then commenting with things like this. Um, I gave you know a little uh, uh, thing on the bottom here. I don't know. I necessarily didn't know why I included it. I mean, if you want to read it, you know, in your case, you can't turn your volume up at work with your headphones on or something. Uh, but this is just going into the uh, basically the same things that I said. Uh, that uh, yeah. we always pay attention when it's a uh, you see an apparition. You start asking the questions that we outlined in the last two shows, the last two Thursdays, well yep. Friday, and um, to um, what. You know, while we're talking about two Fridays, for some reason, is there, the um, YouTube is looking really, really fuzzy. Is there any way that we can get that in a little bl- bit clearer, Kenny? I need to have that verified by uh, more than one person. Oh, okay, well, two people says, okay, Tony says it looks crisp. Chris says it looks fuzzy. Mikey, Michael says it looks fuzzy. It looks fuzzy to me. So I'm wondering if maybe that's a connection. Uh, hmm. See, I've got three people saying fuzzy, 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 fuzzy. Fuzzy Fuzzy was a bear. Yeah. Fuzzy Fuzzy had no hair. Now, Fuzzy Fuzzy Wuzzy had some hair. Could Fuzzy Wuzzy be a bear? I don't know. It's like that. See? That's what they're saying. It looks a little fuzzy. Crazy, crazy. Oh, it's supposed to be 720p high def. See, this is the mm-hmm. kind of stuff. I don't know how you're going to get around that when it's set for that. Yep. Yeah, Jennifer says it looks a little bit fuzzy, too. So yeah. that's four fuzzies. Hmm. That don't happen on Facebook. That's strange. Yeah, so they can't read this writing. That's what I was worried about. I don't know how I'm going to get out of that. Hmm. Yeah, that's not good. That's why we called it the test show tonight, kids, because we just weren't all that sure. Um, Yeah, Orion says it's a little bit fuzzy to him, too. Let me look at it just a minute here. So he's looking at it, and while he does that, I'm going to talk about, you know, sometimes we can't catch all these questions. Yeah, it says 720p. um, There's always a lot of them. That's crazy. Yeah, so maybe this is my monitor and everybody else's monitor. Should we refresh or something? No, it can't be because Facebook, uh, whatever, won't This is YouTube. No, I'm just saying, why would it look better on the, the one that's way behind the technology uh, of YouTube, I right? Have, okay, Tony yeah. says it looks clearer than usual, and Jennifer says it's probably YouTube, so... could be They could be buffering it I'm Yeah, I'm thinking Big might be. I don't know. 
Oh, okay. So yeah. Michael says it's on the computer, Chris, but on Firefly, it's really fuzzy. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Jay Navarro. He says it's really clear. So I guess it's everybody's wow, individual crazy. monitor because, you guys, I can't read what Ken's got up or I'd be commenting on it. You know, So that's why oh, you yeah. see me looking over here to see a, me looking at my notes because it's like we've got all these little notes around here. And I, we were hoping to look at the screen, but mm-hmm. crazy, crazy screen. All right. Thank you. That's for why we patience. call it a test show, so we can yep, throw test show, so we can just there. throw all this stuff out there, people. Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay, okay. So Tony says watching the Apple TV YouTube app and the writing is crystal clear for me. Oh, excellent. That's all good right. to hear. Mm-hmm. Good, I good, get good. Back to my chat page. Yeah, again. I'm not sure. So anyway, like I was saying, uh, we get these questions sometimes, and a lot of times there are so many layers of the part of the question we have to ask. Sometimes it's just it's just not so simple, and it mm-hmm. seems like it's a simple in and out question that, okay, let's just attack it and go. And it's not really. It, it's we have to take it apart and pull it apart. Isn't that strange? Mm-hmm. Yes. Oh, Chris Uh, says, it's probably my phone. Oh, thank you, Chris Thompson. You know, we just want to produce the best show possible. And Ken goes through a lot of of trouble to make sure. Maybe they got to set it on your YouTube browser. Jennifer says, go full screen and you can see it better. Now, that's an idea. If we go full screen, though, Jennifer, I don't think I'll be able to see chat unless, you know, he adds the chat to the screen. It still looks foggier. It's supposed to be uh, be 720p. Yeah. Oh, now it says HD. Hmm. Right on the on the gear below the ah, uh, window. Ah, okay. Well, Ken just hit something that's at HD, hmm. so your feedback is still pretty essential. I'm going to try refreshing mine. I don't okay, see Tony that. Watson. Tony Watson says Ken's block has turned totally black, but she can still oh, oh. see Farah. <laughs> I don't know why that's occurred. Yeah, you're totally black, Ken. <laughs> Ooh, that's a color. Oops. Oh, I guess. <laughs> No, I can't find any settings in the broadcaster, to, uh, but maybe that's it. I might have to run Thank you so tests. much for the feedback, everyone. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he is Gaming, right now rate, trying CDR. to scroll through audio and and visual. Can you see him now? I hope. Hmm. I'm hoping, I'm hoping. Yeah, they will, they will. I had my my uh, my, my, uh, my camera shut off while I got out of my chair, so it didn't <laughs> look too unprofessional. I am going to refresh my page and see if mm-hmm. that helps a little bit. I'm just going to, like... Well, anyway, I'm that, not getting it live anymore. Um, Isn't that just, weird? Just to end that topic, it was uh, it's just a, a thing that uh, watch both episodes and then bef- because this was a, it's, I get these every once in a while and uh, they uh, the person didn't listen to it and they say hey I, I I tell them all the time watch that watch the video again I said that so um, and all of these things were brought up. But we always look, we were looking for the red flags. The child spirit's in my bed. Do we automatically say, I'll help you find your mommy, who you miss, and you're left alone in the dark, and all this other stuff, you know. Or it's your dead relative, you know, who wants to hang out with you because you're feeling sorry, you know, uh, bad that uh, that they passed away or whatever. You don't automatically accept it. You don't have to test it either because you can use yes. the list that we gave you in the last two episodes mm-hmm. to go over that. And all of these things were mentioned in there. All these things yes. in the scenario is don't sit there and do nothing. Do something about it. You can even pray if it's a purgatory Precisely. spirit. You know, you don't want them to linger and hang out with you. Don't be selfish. If you're your relative, you want them to hang out with you all the time when they can go on to heaven? No, you better let and them they be. they can go up there and they can pray for you or something? <laughs> I don't understand it. Why would you welcome, you know, the ghost spirit or whatever they, that you think it is without even looking to see if it's a demon, which most often it is? Yes. A uh, ghost spirit like we were talking about, well, you know, you can know they'd be there 70 uh, years or in the South, some Civil War ghosts are still uh, showing up and taking their boots off, you know, like they're they're getting home. Um, so, yeah, you s- this is why we put ourselves out there because of this, this. This is a small example of it, though. All right. You want to do a, uh, let's see. Uh, oh, yeah. By the way, yes, go ahead and, and post uh, questions. Anything at all. Anything at all. Don't forget, um, like our video. Thank you. I see I've already got eight thumbs up. Thank you so much, kids. If you can, click the link, the cute little link, the little arrow that, you know, slides where it says share. And on that, you can either copy and paste or you can share it on any of your pages, LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook, Mm -hmm. um, because that helps you know, get the information out there. And that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to share real life details, real events, real solution, because what? We're the 
Real, Real deals. deals. <laughs> Thank you all for tuning in. This is our Labor Day test show. Happy Labor Day to you. God bless the fruits of your labor. And we know, you know, it just, it, it's not always, it's not always right away we get to see the fruits of our labor. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Jennifer, for sharing. I really appreciate it. Tell uh, hi to your boy Bumpley in the back. Where Where is Kev tonight? But, uh, you know, we all yeah. go through different times in our life where, you know, we might think that we're going to be an engineer for the rest of our life and we end up being an architect. I am. Oh, well, what? Not architect. You're not an architect or no. an engineer? I'm an architect. You went, you, you went black again. People can't see you. They're going to get upset. They like to see your face. Oh, they aren't. <laughs> oh, no, I see you now. There you yeah, are. I didn't go black. <laughs> yeah. Oh, goodness. Okay, so the... Um, I'll do this. Da 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 da. Here we go. Oh no, not that. <laughs> Is this my clue? <gasps> oh, that's right. Oh, you kitties, there's so much going on in the world today with evil. Evil, evil, evil. And we can't say enough how much everything's so turned upside down. It mm-hmm. used to be if somebody did something horrible, it's like, oh, he's horrible. He's a swindler. He's a criminal. You know, he left people to die. He did this. He did that. Um, and all of a sudden, it's it just like, okay, so now that's not such a big deal. And mm-hmm. um, evil is truly thought of as, well, yeah, we can't say good. that because it's going to hurt somebody's feelings. And that's not politically correct, right? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. That's crazy. <laughs> Oh, it's just yeah, this so guy crazy. looks like a guy I bought uh, my computer part the other day from. Greetings from it's Arizona. Oh, my gosh. I used to repossess cars in Phoenix, Anna. So glad you could join us. We won't be talking about repossession tonight. <laughs> yeah, no repossessions. Oh, Deborah Johnson. Deb, we were going to call you tonight. And we're like, no, you're probably playing with Yuna. Yeah. Deb Johnson's in the room. She still has fun. There's no snow outside. It's easier to ride a dog in the yard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the dog's pulling her around on a greased box, okay? Except she can so pull that, you, you know, on a sled. She can That's ride the, the grassy waves. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This was, uh, uh, this was a uh, story in uh, something. Okay, this was in uh, Oklahoma. I don't know what's going on in Oklahoma. And they had this uh, satanic mass, and it made world news. That was really remember that? crazy. That remember was like that? three years ago. And there was there was just what? There was only a few people that were even protesting that. That yeah. was that was just and, and really that strange. Many, didn't fifty attend? They rented an arena or something like that. Something a really big venue. Yeah. Uh a uh and then they brought in there all their garbage or whatever. And uh it, it was it was a low turnout. Yeah, you're right about the protesters too. And then they tried to put that goat boy statue. That in. was strange. And it's like, what's going on with Oklahoma? It's like, you know, when I get hit with a tornado again, I'm going to go, yep, I'm sorry, but you can't do that stuff without cursing the whole city. Yes. Don't even allow it. Well, and that's what we were talking about in the last show is that when you move to a new town, you don't know, really. Mm-hmm. I, it's hard to know. How how are you going to know? How are you going to have assurance that the mayor of that town, um, the senator of that area... Uh, you know, like even Father Brian was agreeing lot the other night. Mm-hmm. He was saying, yes, it's true. There, whole towns, whole regions are dedicated to Satan. They're de- dedicated to Freemasonry. They're dedicated to the dark arts. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, th- there's no sign when you, you know, drive over the border and you see, welcome to Tennessee. You're not going to mm-hmm. see some huge sign that says, welcome, it's satanic Happyville here. Mm-hmm. So how are we going to know, Ken? How are we going to know? This is this is kind of I tell some of the confusion too that mm-hmm. that lame statement that says all religions yes. lead to God. I've heard uh, somebody we know say it. I've heard. Oh, uh, I'm, so, I'm so tired of hearing that. I'm not going to say who this other person was, but uh, who was supposed to be Catholic. But this is why these are Hindu goddesses and gods. And he brought up the dark <gasps> side ones. Oh my gosh! Exactly. Remember mm-hmm. that that picture we looked at. That was really strange. Okay. All right. What we saw, you guys, what we're telling you we saw in this article is he brings up this image, okay, of what he called this. Look at this picture. Look at this picture. He calls this a Persian god. This is a Hindu god. All right. And we're not, I hope his name's up there. I don't want his name up there. You should have blacked that out. Oh, it's an article. It's not mine. That's true. I just I don't want to give any credit. Demonology 101. Don't look at it. Don't address it. Don't <laughs> give it any give credit. We're credit when we push something. No credit. 
But uh, that's not a Persian god. I mean, yes, it could be considered an ancient Persian god because the demon was definitely around there, and that's mm -hmm. you know how the Hindus learned of it. And oh, sadly, this is uh, this this is the olive that fell from the fig tree again. Nope, that's not a fig. That's an olive. It's interesting what people will want you to believe. Yeah, that's true, Michael. Once you see it. Well, you can't a, unsee it. You'll see the word high priest come up again on someone who's uh, playing uh, like they're an ex-Satanist high priest or whatever, but they're not using the term. And so even, the, you know, this guy's, this isn't the same Satanism, but. No, this is, know. this is what I call. The regular Satanism. You know, I, ha I have to tell you guys, you know, from knowing people that have been in cults and escaped them, this guy's a play guy. He's kind of like uh, the Zachary King of the Catholic world. He's like, hey. Look at what I did. Look at me. Mm -hmm. You know, look at all the stuff that I did. And when in reality, the real bad ones, yeah. you don't hear about them. You don't see them. They're so entrenched. They're so mm -hmm. protected. Yeah, they got a hierarchy that shuts them up. Say, hey, quit being so vocal about this stuff. And uh, this joker. Don't make you have an accident. I mean, <laughs> this is what we call regalia. He's in dress up, full red dress up. You know, he, he looks like one of Santa's reject elves. We are I'll tell you what he elves. looks like. If I had a dollar for every I'm sorry, demon Jesus, that's awful. Be out I mean, there, I know Jesus loves this know, guy, but he uh, maybe uh, you know, you know, put a hood on Satanist and stuff like really that. And go like this. I think he just looks. He looks more like these fake demon algists are all out there, on the, especially on the East Coast. It's like you know, it's like it just there's only a handful of people I even don't laugh at or whatever. And oh my gosh, you know what? I tell you what, all of you people that are faking this stuff. You're going to find out how and why, because we're going to use all your words against you in audio and in text, and these are words that are on articles and so forth, and it's going to hang you. We don't even have to say any opinions. Well, That's you what know, we've done Chris before. points out a really good point Not here, Not tonight, honey. though. You know, but no. Chris Thompson points out a really good point. Everyone's really desensitive. Uh, they're totally desensitized to just almost every single ugly thing there is out there. And when mm. you have people out here like this guy bragging that he's using his wife's menstrual blood for yeah. ceremonies. And, yeah, yeah the 14-year-old girl is like, uh, I don't have any friends because of these weirdo parents of mine. My aunt gives me a Bible and they threw it away. I pray for that kid. I pray that kid gets the heck away from them as soon as possible. You know, mm -hmm. and I, this is, I don't believe in calling, you know, Child Protective Services on anyone. I would on this one. I pray, I pray somebody gets her out of that home. As soon as possible. I just pray by it's an act really, of God. It's not one you're going to be comfortable like with adopting or And anything. not because they don't believe like I believe. Because, yeah. uh, one, if you're a Satanist, you're not out there bragging you're using your wife's period blood. Two, you're not looking for attention. You're out there creating hell on earth and laughing about it without anybody really even knowing you're evil because you blend into the world so easily. But like somebody said, putting on a Halloween costume and saying, hey, look at me over here. There's something wrong with that. Mm -hmm. Look at this poor kid right here. Yes, you I is another, right. Yukon place. Cornelius, that's a good one. Yeah, that's pretty disgusting. But to tell you the truth, kids, that's that doesn't even touch reality of where they get blood. Yeah. That, that doesn't even touch reality. Well, you know. That's a joke. When you get witchcraft candles, you guys see black candles or sometimes red. Instead of... Catholic candles, old Christian mm -hmm. candles, I yes. think it, it was Jewish too, a pure beeswax. It doesn't have that poly, uh, poly well, stuff. Well, it's, it's all in, natural. It's all natural. Yeah, that's the idea because there's a power in, in purity <coughs> in, me. in God's church. And in these, they put everything disgusting in it. I'm not talking about blood, sweat, and tears, but one of those. Mm -hmm. You know, blood. And think of everything that's disgusting that comes out of somebody. They make candles out of that stuff. Yes. And that's the whole idea to make them almost, and you're burning it in your house. Yes, now, and the other thing. <clears throat> and the reason we, yeah. we called our show tonight fakers, phonies, and flipping whack jobs. Okay, this is what we call a flipping whack job, okay? Basically because this is today's modern glee club. You mm -hmm. don't just go, like when we were growing up and stuff, you wanted to go be in the club that was, you know, building a cool tree house. You can climb in it. So you wanted to belong to maybe the marble club or the tennis club or, you know, the secret club because you guys were like building, you know, secret airships, you know, with old parts that you got from trains in the forest and you like had piles of cool stuff and you got your dad's extra stuff. Those are the kind of cool clubs. Now, everybody, what are they joining? 
Well, let's see. I'm in the Buy Try Club. I am in the Let's See What I Look Like as a Guy for a Day Club. Le and I'm not making fun of people that have those sexual kind of issues. I would never do that. What I'm saying, though, that this is this Satanism is a sickness, and it is what they are trying to get attention for. They want... You know, put your little quarter in the slot and look at what comes out. Oh, well, are you going to be donating some of your personal body fluids? Uh, let's, they brag that they're doing marriages. Let's look at this, people. If you're associated with a church, you don't need to advertise that you do marriages. If you are truly believing what you do and doing what you believe why why do you need to make sure that you're giving interviews so that you're as controversially as possible and people look to you and think hmm he must be an expert no this is uh yeah. this is uh the modern day glee club of america let's join a satan group just to say i tried that please don't please don't once Can you're you in that, it, you'll like never get out of it. satanic marriages like everybody's going to rush to, and you're going to be like yes. the, as popular as a, a really good Elvis impersonator in an Elvis That's a horrible chapel thing. where he plays a priest like, do you say, do you take this woman? <laughs> I don't think he, he sings that good, honey. Elvis? But can you get that ugly <laughs> yeah. image off the computer? I don't want to look at it anymore. Which one? The, the one that looks, you know, like it's actually... Oh, oh uh, yeah, okay. I that's a gargoyle. Uh, yeah, that's yeah. a demon, honey. You can call it a gargoyle. I'll call well, they it. They copied it from. Uh, anyway, it's a it's a reproduction of a statue. Mm -hmm. so not a direct one, of course, because you can't just put a mold on it. So there's a lot of people out there who are going to claim that they have all these skills and tools that they have. They have a way to harness the power of nature, the power of gods, the power of Satan. Well, you know what? If they did, do you think they'd be there in a red Santa costume with a fake Catholic collar and throwing away their little girl's Bibles? I mm -hmm. don't see how. Yeah, I think I don't really want to go over this one anymore. But um, yeah. look, when I look at him, I see narcissists. I see the same thing I see in a lot of these fake demonologists and fake priests out there. But he wants to raise more controversy. Now, how would he make the news in UK, the UK Sun, with only 15 members? Mm -hmm. They like this like gossip, of this uh, yeah. National Enquirer stuff. Um, it's like the, the way they used to run at haunted house stories in the old days. That's where the Amityville. Oh, by the way, in October we're going to talk about haunted houses. Yeah, we're going to talk about all kinds talk about. of old cases and old haunted houses. You don't want to miss October shows. Mm -hmm. We're going to bullet point them and have a lot of fun. But you know, we'll post that other. Yeah, because some of it's funny. Now, now that we've seen, I'm not going to say we've seen it all. No one has. We've seen so much um, and, since you know, I first heard of the Amityville case. I'm going to basically tell you when I think it's made up or phony that it's getting made up by um, um, what's his, his name, Jay Anson, who died. Yes. You know, uh, not let, not that long after the book was written, he died of something, and it wasn't demonic. I'm sure. I'm going to play armchair demonologist with this because you said you know something about him that I think people need to understand when they're talking about um, helping people and they're talking mm -hmm. about helping people get out of Satanism and stuff like that. When I see this, when I see this face, I see a very um, hurt, abused, frightened little boy that desperately wants to prove himself and his manhood to everyone because he doesn't believe in himself. And nobody's ever believed in him, and even states so. Kids in the commentary, mm -hmm. he said the reason that he got into Satanism is because he um, knows martial arts. Why would somebody? at the age that this happened why would you learn martial arts you learn martial arts to defend yourself and to possibly potentially hurt somebody that is trying to hurt you correct usually, usually. so mm -hmm. um what specifically happened he got into an altercation where somebody was going to hurt him bad he used his martial arts training and the person died he was not charged not arrested he looked everywhere he says to every religion for some sort of help for some sort of answer um, what does that tell me mm -hmm. um, from my experience in the cases I've done? He has an uncontrolled rage inside of him. And why do we have uncontrolled rages inside of ourselves? 
usually we have a parent that never identified, valued, or even paid attention to us. Usually this points to possible a child molestation at a very early age. This points to an inability to bond with a parent of the same sex. There are many, many reasons, psychological reasons that people have such a rage against anything that walks in their path that they can't explain it. And, and as I said, this is, this is really common in a lot of cases. The people don't understand why they have this rage inside of them. And then something horrible happens. Now this person's got to deal with the, the consequences. And what happens? All his religions say that, you know, oh yeah, you know, you're going to go to hell. There's, there's, no, there's no forgiveness for you. You know, you did the unthinkable. You took another's life. No one could help him come to terms and say, well, you didn't do it on purpose. It was the intent of your heart that mattered. So nobody could explain that to him. Now, how was the devil so good at keeping anyone away that could actually point him in the right direction? Well, we won't know that God does and his guardian angel does. And, you know, for whatever reason, I have to pray God has him on his path and that he gets out of Satanism because this is a game at this point. There's nothing that I can see that he's done that's real. So... What would we see in a case like this? We would see that, you know, he's playing at these games. He's playing at being a Satanist because he feels powerless. And hopefully he doesn't go all the way. Hopefully he does not sign his name in blood and everything and offer his life to Satan. And hopefully he can undo what he's done. Because the only reason mm -hmm. he's done it is because he feels helpless. And he feels used up. And he feels shall we say, left out of the group because that's what he wanted. He just wanted a religion that would accept him and that's why he's turned to Anton LaVey. Yes, Tony, pray for his conversion. He's very lost. There's many, 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 many out there like this. Like I said, we will not see. Satanists don't come out and say, hey, I'm offering up some fabulous wedding chapel values this month and oh, by the way, if you're here early, we'll toss in some menstrual blood in that cup of juice you guys All get right, to drink from. All right, don't say that word again. I'm sorry, it's disgusting, <laughs> but this is this is this is just so horrible, kids. Various, yes, yeah. just just blood. So, yeah. but needless yeah. to say, this this kind of anger, this kind of rage, and this kind of attitude is very common in what we do, and to the level that people chase it, whether they call it Satanism, whether they call it the occult, whether they call it New Age, whether they call it. Well, you know, I just turned on my EVP meter a few times, and you know, my friends and my family want me to do it now too. That's still playing a game. You're playing with the occult. It's dangerous. So I guess that that's my armchair observations. We can go next, honey. Yeah, the um, in this caption right here, he's saying something about Anton LaVey. His motto is self-preservation is the highest law. If you you know read into it, even philosophically, you will will uh, draw a negative demon to you. Tommy, I only had this happen. I had it happen. I was just reading some notes from a Lutheran minister on, on Satanism, but it had quotes all over there from the Satanic Bible and some of the stuff from the Rosicrucians or whatever. And then I woke up and there was a red eye shadow. And then later on, I'm reading a uh, guitar player and Tommy Iommi is telling the story how the song Black Sabbath got written, where uh, the shadow, uh, shadowy hooded specter showed up at his bedside when he, he fell asleep reading the Satanic Bible that he found uh, at, at band practice. His drummer's brother had left it there, and he goes, oh, check this out. This is strange. And he woke up and saw that, and he had sleep paralysis. And it's uh, it's not a, g uh, by the way, I mean, everybody has an idea about Black Sabbath and everything. But he's talking about him being terrified when they wrote this song, uh, the, which inspired the band's name Black Sabbath, too. That's England for you. Self-preservation is the highest law. Yeah, but it's at the expense of others. They have three laws of their 11. Uh, they have like 11 commandments, supposedly. This is Anton LaVey's version, by the way, which is kind of like the light public version of Satanism because they don't talk about the ritual sac sacrifices or anything in there, of course. And, oh, someone will say, oh, yeah, they do. <laughs> yeah. Why aren't they arrested like Manson then? Self-preservation is a high level. It, it just it puts it in there like destroy them. If they get in your face, destroy them. What what else do you call destroy? Destroy like you call all their sponsors up and get them to stop uh, hosting or promoting your business or TV show or anything. No, you know I mean he talks in there that he uh, fought back and the kid hit his head in the ground and his head split open like a pumpkin or something like that. You know it's a, this guy is like probably obsessed with death. All right, yeah, you're right. Let's uh, let's just get out of that. 
Um, so, um, how do you end it? You end it with goofy robot fails. <laughs> 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 the okay, light it back Ken. up again. Everybody's afraid of the AI of robots taking over, but when you watch this, you're just going to laugh when you see your the first AI robot. The AI of robot, they just opened a robot prostitution house. I mean, how can you ignore uh, the stupidity? They don't do nothing. Of course they don't do anything. <laughs> you have to turn them on. <laughs> they, just lay, <laughs> they just lay there. Yeah, all right, all right. A little joke. Like this, do oh, I'm sorry, guys. That was bad. That was bad. That was bad. Give me like, in the pig meat These robots Australia. look like they don't have much of a will. It's like, oh, screw it. <laughs> you know, it's, it's like every one of these things you can say, oh, screw it. Oh, shoot. What do I do now? Oh, screw it. You know, I mean, that's what it looks like. Right here, look at the chicken legs one. You and your robots. Rooster legs or, or whatever you call it. Uh, this is funny. He, like, totally misses the Norden oven. I wonder why they always decide that they're going to give up when they can't get it. It's like it's like they're built. They have this built-in suicide mechanism. <laughs> that's you in the morning. There's me in the morning without no, my I coffee. Don't fall, I don't fall down. That's mine. <laughs> yeah, you'd know about that. Look at this one. This oh, one's afraid. Like, don't God. make me get off of here. Don't. Oh, I knew this was going to happen. <laughs> oh my gosh. Hey, just to top everything off. I Just think we'll to top do. everything off, him and his robots. Oh, no, it's Dr. time Dr. Freud's Dr. therapy oh. ball. Yes, robot lust. Shake it up, shake it up. <laughs> Dr. Freud's therapy ball. Okay, the, what do you think of this whole thing there, huh? It says... Robots, bad. Drunken what, robots. <laughs> what do you think? He asked. Yeah, so much for that. <laughs> I am Dr. Freud's therapy ball. Oh my. Please have a seat. Now, what should we talk about now, Farrah Roll? Well, what do you want to talk about? I want to mention something uh, real quick, and I'm sure that you'll have something to say about it, too. The Auxilianorium and the Christianorum. Auxilium Christianorum. Auxilium Christianorum. Binding and rebuking prayers. What about them? This this is out in book form now, which has not just the prayers, oh. which is probably be like a six page book, but I'm sure it has okay. some other things. There's, there's a bit of a controversy with this. Why is that? The fact that it's out in paperback means What's wrong it's with it? it's um it's like putting our books out. But I put stern warning in the beginning, maybe even too much. People are reading these prayers and they get demonic payback. Uh, especially during the first uh, well, six Chad weeks. Well, Father Chad reminds people of that all the time. And I want everybody to know that uh, just because you call your priest your spiritual mentor doesn't mean he's qualified to tell you that, no, don't have a prayer group. Back in uh, the early 2000s, I had a prayer group who volunteered, and um, I uh, had a possession case I was working on, and they when, they when they volunteered and they asked me any particular cases, I said, you can pray about this. This case told them. Mm -hmm. And uh, I about four weeks later, I got a contact from the lead guy, and he said, "Is there anything too, you know, bad luck or something happening to people making these kind of prayers?" I guess they hadn't prayed for real demonic cases before, in their church, uh, and that so forth. He says because everybody's having hardships, cars breaking down, yeah. husbands and wives fighting and breaking up and separating, all of that stuff. He says the whole prayer team is broken up. That's and scary. I said, "Aren't you praying for yourselves?" So in other words, you entered the battle even if you're just sitting at home in your butt well, praying. Well, they just put a big target on themselves is what they mm -hmm. did. And that's not a good thing always. And, and is it, oh. you know, is it going to stir things up and then it's going to back off? Well, is it going to, like, you're going to get paid up and you know, your bodyguard's going to show up because you put a down payment on him and he didn't give us full services? Mm -hmm. I'm not really sure why you would begin to pray and then continue to pray after you've had hardships unless you, A, talk to your spiritual director find out hey am i missing anything and maybe he recommends like maybe more masses like you know we go to mass uh several times a week a blessed sacrament make sure you don't miss your your daily rosary those type of things the higher path of those prayers because listening to praise and worship music and a preacher isn't going to cut it no. you better become prayerful and more religious if you're going to even enter the battle as a spiritual a spirit warrior and that's prayer warrior i guess the the word is but i'm sure you know it's it's um it's a great uh, organization and everything, but anytime you enter the battle, even on prayer, expect payback, and you're not going to like the payback because your things will break down, you'll be haunted nightmares because you're meddling. They're paying. You know what? They have a legal right to be there in that person's life, 
And you don't have a legal right except by the authority of Jesus to some extent. And everybody doesn't because you're not an ordained priest. No, only that. They don't have you the know, faculties. Yeah, okay? and I Thomas don't know. Aquinas for some reason, some people... specifically outlines the specific faculties that we're mm -hmm. given spiritually. And it's not something we can just pull out of a Cracker Jack box and say, Oh, by the way, I have the authority to get rid of your demon. Everybody doesn't have the same authority. No. Remember, the apostles... Uh, here's the way the church works. See, the Pope is like the uh, the lead bishop. He's like Peter. And then the, uh, the the bishops are like the apostles, and uh, the priests are like the seventy-two. The bishop allocates his office of exorcism yes. authority to the priest, and that's what the appointed exorcist is about. It makes sense when you think about it. Now he does that too. You you know I mean to a certain level. You know like mm -hmm. we're not recognized and appointed by uh, our bishop. We have more faculties because of that. But I wouldn't be in this if I had that much trouble beforehand. You know I wouldn't even. No, Seek exactly. It, you know? And you know, you if did I can't take, even pray, you without... actually took a break for a while, which is very smart mm -hmm. when you were going through a difficult time. A lot of people don't. Yeah, and just to make sure I don't add uh, insult to injury, because they'll pick on all that stuff. If you're emotional, weak, you'll lose somebody. Uh, mother, father dies, or whatever. If it's hitting you really hard, Padre Pio got taken out for six months. He went into like seclusion. So I mean, even the saints have a great difficulty on that. Which brings up one thing I want to mention without doing a Captain Kirk imitation. One thing I want to mention is the saints, uh, we're not living saints. You know, like I said, you know, I don't like listening to provocative music or music with insinuations of, you know, uh, you know, night, one night stands and all that stuff. Um, but I still like, you know, dream theater and I like the, the hard rock, but I don't really listen to it as much, you know. Um, I like horror movies. I don't like slasher movies. I like good ghost stories and, you know, some monsters. I like Nightmare on Elm Street, you know. The new one came out. I don't know. Things are, movies just start to save anymore. They're really demonic now, you know, some, some level. Here's what I'm getting to. You're not really going to run into living saints, you know, with the Pat Boone haircut. Uh, you know, the dress is great all the time and stuff. I got t-shirts on. You know, I have a suit on like, you know, the typical, uh, you know, Bob Larson used to wear a suit. Uh, don't get these stereotypes out of your mind. You know, are we, are we living saints? And what was Padre Pio like? Didn't he hit that one guy when he uh, said something about the Blessed Mother when he was blessing his vineyard? He says, don't you say, he knocked him down slapping him. Don't you say that about, you know, the mother of uh, Jesus. No. So, you know, the no. saints weren't even the saints. We're far from Catherine of Siena and mm -hmm. Padre Pio. But, you know, if you have a living saint, you might find the most pious and devout person who just walks in and the demon can't stand to be in the same room with them because they're glowing so much. Like Charlton Heston, after he leads, you know, leaves the uh, mount uh, where the burning bush, whatever that was in a, in a movie, he's all glowing. And he, you know, that's what everybody expects it to be. But he picks regular people. You see the apostles arguing amongst themselves about who was the, uh, loved more by Jesus? I mean, they were just regular people given assignments. So stop looking, you know, like, you want to look, you know, ask me, you know, it's like, um, um, everybody, you know, goes through their, their life and, you know, the, um, no one's perfect. And we try to strive to be perfect and we may never reach the achievement of saints, but then again, what is it our goal to be, you know, um, not our goal, God's choice to make us a, a cloister, uh, priest, uh, uh, a bro brother, I mean. You know, we're of third order, you know, um, so don't expect to see a Pat Boone haircut. And if you see this and I don't look pious enough for you or traditional, oh, by the way, yeah, we, we practice the more traditional methods and we go to the, uh, what they call the Novus Ardo and all that. And, and Jesus has not left the building. I assure you, the authority is still there. Very powerful. What's the, our ministry when you work with priests, blessing all the things we've got. You know, I don't have no strange illness or anything like that. God's on our side. But in the final thing, I want to say judgmental. We talked about it earlier. Stop with the judgmental stuff. You know, you want to get toe-to-toe -to -toe and stuff. You know, I'd love to debate some of you guys who think you're holier than thou. You know, because I'm, I'm getting tired of it to some degree. It is judgmental. And the most judgmental people are some of the people that think, I'm doing all this stuff. How about the people in the Bible? Lord, Lord, Lord. And he says, I don't know you. Be awake. Go away. You don't know me. He's not in, these people aren't even practicing. They end up mm -hmm. gossip. These ladies yes. that volunteer for everything in church are the biggest gossips. <laughs> right? You know, and then they got the biggest scandals in those oh, things. I was going to say they know my underwear yeah. size, but I don't think that's appropriate. Yeah, it's just, so, 
I mean, if you want an example, look and say, go, hey, you know, they got all these. If the if you can see openly that there's a problem, you know, uh, with everything that we're doing, like, oh, hey, yeah, Kenny's always, you know, he's always sick, you know, he's uh, he's posting porn, you know, or or something. I mean, that'll be the look, day. I don't think you'll ever do that. Look for the fruits, you know. I ever, mean, if you ever. don't see them, then shut up. All right, you want to do what we do? You know, there's a friend of mine, and, you know, his priest said, you know, you really shouldn't be doing this, you know. He doesn't have uh, recognition from the bishop or anything. And he says, uh, you're going to do it? Mm -hmm. He says, I see what you mean. Mm -hmm. So even the priest can't be judged in the same way. Every priest is not cut out. He doesn't want to enter that arena of uh, working with a demonic. We got desensitized, in some ways hardened. Uh, we joke about it because we're desensitized. And a lot of people think that, you up. know what, that we're not serious enough. That, you know, we yeah. should be taking this so serious. So, you know, we get these PMs constantly. Well, how come you laugh and have a good time? And how come you're joking about stuff? And, you know, how come you do, just don't take it serious? You know, this stuff is serious and they're all demons and this and that. It's like, excuse me. If you saw the stuff I did, went through the stuff I did, and see the people change that I have, you'd be yeah. laughing at it too. Because if we don't laugh, I'll be popping pills in a nut hatch saying, <laughs> you know what? No more. No more. Just let me have my little ball yarn and my TV go away. I got my med. But no, I could not do that. Mm -hmm. There's too many people out there, too many souls. And if we can just plant one seed, one seed, that's all I ask God. Just just let me have one. Mm -hmm. If you want to send me more, I'll do what I can with every single one. So that that's why we're here. We, we have to laugh. We have mm -hmm. to laugh right in his face because he's as ineffectual as a gnat. Or unless God gives him the legal right because we've mm. already given it then yeah. those entities those little minions under whatever general of satan they're allowed to do what they can do but do you think we get serious when we cry and we run and turn tail heck no mm. and you know anna was uh pointing out in the chat room that there's so many priests that don't even believe that satan is actually alive or is actually active in this world i was telling her yeah we hear that at least once a week and thank you for yeah, addressing that, Ken, because just because a, a priest tells you he doesn't believe, that does not mean he's any less effective. Yeah. Or that mean does not mean he's any less of a person. It means that he has a personal opinion. He wasn't trained. He wasn't taught. He does not have the experience. And he may not be able to correctly counsel, but he still has the sacraments of the church. And let me tell you, if you're in a boat and that boat capsizes... Are you going to want your Winnie the Pooh little squishy? Are you going to want a little uh, pet floaty that's inflated? Or are you going to want that big, solid, hardcore rubber ring that's attached to the side of the big boat that you were too ashamed to hold on to in front of anybody? Pride. That's, yeah. that's what we see. Yeah. Big time pride. Mm -hmm. The sacraments are there for a reason. And there is nothing to say... Because we help people that have never known, never believed, mm -hmm. never thought they would ever believe. They mm -hmm. have seen holy water change their lives. Mm -hmm. They've seen a little tiny kernel of faith put on a St. Benedict medal and no more nightmares, mm -hmm. no more touching, no more succubus. Mm -hmm. So God works with your faith that you've already got. And we're blessed that That's those true. priests are there even talking to people. So if you're knocking on doors, keep knocking on those doors. You're going to find one. Here's a myth, too. Like, remember we are talking about this uh, thing with uh, Charlton Heston coming from the mountain looking straight Hey, Ron Adair. Good to see you. And he's just, like, staring ahead, and his face looks like it's glowing, and he's got that Billy Graham look and whatever, you know. And uh, I, I had a f argument with PayPal about some ripoff, and I had to go to take care of a house you know that i'm going over there to interview the people and we brought the holy water and everything and we're going to do it before we have to call a priest see how that works what i learned from the years it doesn't matter that you're upset you can pray it off in a way to get yourself more at peace it still works because god's with your ministry he doesn't it doesn't matter what no. mood you're in so that's what i mean don't expect us all to be saints and you know what i've watched my friends get picked on and ripped off and eventually I stuck up for him, you know. I remember going to this one garage and standing there like this with my friend so my friend can talk to the garage guy about fixing his car, which he refused to do. Oh, he changed his mind real quick because I'm scary looking. <laughs> well, you are scary you know, looking. But, uh, I 
you know, don't expect me to back down from a fight. Especially, no. you know, if you're going to attack the church, I'm going to apologetically, yes. you know, uh, go at you sometimes. Sometimes and, I don't care. And that's just Just it. to make a point, because if you're going to do it in a public forum, I'm, I'm Peter, I'm Paul, in front of the pagans. You know, we're about ready to throw tomatoes, and he's making a great argument. Hopefully not like uh, St. Stephen. They got thrown in, in, <laughs> with rocks and, uh, and uh, got pelted to death with rocks. But don't expect us to be, mm-hmm. oh, 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 peace to you, brother. Oh, you're going to sing you're the a Kung Fu fighting song. Oh, that is, I appreciate your opinion, brother. You know, and I'm sorry if I've offended you. I'm not going to do that stuff. That's not what God brought us to be. No. We're fighters. You know, and that's, did oh. Jesus go into the temple when he saw people selling doves and stuff in the back of the temple? Thank and go, you. Oh, I understand, brother, that you need to make income. No, he turned those tables over. So quit your judging about people. We're going to say something that's true. You know what? And don't get me started about abortion either. I'll go off big and deep. And, you know, everybody who's ever had an abortion, God will forgive you. Ask for it and then move on. Don't vote for people who support this, this horrendous crime. Just end it by asking Jesus for forgiveness and don't promote it with your kids or anybody else exactly. or vote for people who promote it. It's just like that. Be on the side of truth. I think you, know, right. you have a really good point there about um, the things that we have to witness. We are called to point out the truth. We're not called to drop everybody's drawers and give them a swat across their butt. We're called to witness the truth. Yeah. And there are times when you have to take that rod and walk right in the temple and you have to overturn those tables. We pray to God. Give us that moment so we can be in there. Until then, we basically have to stand right there inside the temple and say, hey, you, you can't do that. You can't play with that Ouija board. You can't be sleeping with Tony tonight and Ron tomorrow and, and Angelo Friday. You can't be sleeping with all these guys outside of marriage. You can't be t- popping a pill so you don't have to have babies and think, hmm, it's not a problem. So, sadly, I told Ken we're not going to be popular ever. I don't care. I'm not yeah, here to be popular. <laughs> <laughs> because if you want to light a bowl of sage and wave a little eagle's feather and pop your pills and sleep with five men, well, there's a lot of <coughs> sites you can go on and be popular. This isn't it, kiddies. This one, we got to tell you the truth. When you lay with devils, you're playing with devils. And when you're playing with devils, nothing good's going to come of it. And that's... I, A lot of the cases of of basic vexation and invitation is just, it just starts with these little sins and people don't really see them because, you know, we think nothing of walking home, you know, with five pencils and two reams of paper in our pocket from work, or we think nothing of, you know, helping ourselves to extra supplies and think, oh, well, that's not stealing. Mm -hmm. Sin makes us stupid and we don't realize it. We don't realize how we invite this stuff in. Amen. Yeah. And I got time to bring something up um, on on that. Feel free to ask any uh, questions. Uh, uh, we're not we're not <laughs> never afraid to answer. You know, it's funny too that probably a little bit unrelated. I don't know, yeah. but because you said about when you speak to truth, you're not going to be popular. Back in early 2000, I was on like a radio show every week. I mean, it was a podcast show. And it's like, we haven't put ourselves out there. I don't have a press kit or any of that stuff. Mm-hmm. And I find that, you know, no one's asking us to go on. is because we, I know, we we draw the line. I'm not going to talk about, you know, abortion on these other radio shows because we have a message to warn people. Like, hey, don't trust it's a child's spirit. You know, don't be yes. so gullible. You know, if you're going to go in and do it, this stuff, make sure you uh, really pray about it, think about it, and say your protection prayers every day because you miss the day. That might be the day that you notice the hardships pouring in like a flood of water. Um, but anyway, um, but we're out. We're out there for you. Uh, this is something I wanted to bring up because we have. Well, let's see what. Let's go back. Where is it? Where is it? There we are. <coughs> 1976, uh, there was yes. a guy named John Todd. You ever hear him, Farrah, before? No, no, because, you know, he was not in my purview. He's a few years older than me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> a conspiracy Look theorist. at that. See, it says uh, May 19... Oh, my gosh, this 1949, guy. yeah. He died 2007, age 58. 
and he, he was a demonologist. He was serving a sentence for <gasps> no worse. Oh my gosh, he, for he rape. was arrested for, for rape. He got a thirty-year. So what was he? Here's the significance about him. Oh, he was a preacher. Him. You remember we were talking about uh, people pretending to oh, be ex-Satanists? Yeah. The Southwest, Re- uh, the Southwest Radio Baptist Church was promoting this guy. I don't know if they directly did or they indirectly did by putting him on a show every once in a while. We've made no mistakes, you know, sometimes too, putting people on that we thought were legit. And there's some other people that had the same thing. But he revealed a lot of these, what they call conspiracy theories. The problem is, is a lot of them are true. But then he was making dumb statements like, um, a lot of people say that white witchcraft is okay to practice for Christians, including the Pope. And I'm like, what? You know, because me and my mom and dad were listening to this in 1976 in a small town in mid-Missouri on a tape that we got from somebody. And uh, the, there were shocking revelations in there, and I think he kind of borrowed from other people. And he was doing some scam that was some sort of, like, organization or uh, for farmers, uh, some farmers' organization. And uh, even one of the Blessed Mother apparitions uh, spoke against him. I got a weird story if I'm ever ready, ready to prepare uh, people uh, for that one. Uh, but uh, they call him a former cultist who's born into a witchcraft family. That was his main story. Uh, but I don't remember him talking about, uh, you know, some of these others, uh, some of the background of it. But it sounded, it made the Satanist case more to where they're involved with the government and big business and all that stuff. That was probably more closer to the truth than the people who make it look like a, a small little coven, but they don't really network together in such a larger scale. Uh, but he uh, he was quite convincing. And when you listen to it, you're paranoid. I mean... This person back then they didn't have really good equipment, you know, and stuff. Most mm-hmm. people didn't. Yeah. They used two tape recorders. Whoever made this tape for us put one tape recorder next to the other. One played, and one recorded. Mm-hmm. So when she hit the the gal who recorded it for us, hit the fast forward button, and all of a sudden it goes, meow, 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 you know, and it's like that was so strange. Yeah, it's like it sounds like that one story we have mm-hmm. that happened to us. Um, little poltergeist decided to turn a tape recorder on and then no fast forward it. Um, we thought uh, we were all kind of freaking out. Uh, not really freaking out. In '76, we thought that the tape did down on its own. Then we looked, and it didn't. And because it, it kind of spooked you, you know. And that's yes. what it does to these these conspiracy theory guys. But uh, like I said, he there was a discrepancies that popped into there. And I thought, well, is he like Mel Gibson, in the sense that Mel Gibson made a passion to Christ? He seemed very devout. He built a traditional church. Uh, with his money, and they attended that mass every day before filming *A Passion of the Christ*. He was really on his way, and yes, then he, he was. And then afterwards, you know, and all of everybody, uh, both you know, all the denominations agreed, he was under Satan's attack big time because he ended up divorcing his wife. I think he cheated on her. He became he became a full blown alcoholic. Um, he's supposed to be working on *Passion of the Christ* two, which would be called uh, *Resurrection*. I think the resurrection. But the uh, the fruits, you would expect that. There's going to be payback for going out and telling the truth. But I think this guy never was uh, up in front legit on all levels. So if he converted a little bit, um, he converted, you know, t- um, and and still kept some of these beliefs. And why didn't the Baptist church say, hey, witchcraft is witchcraft. If you have worked for a mob boss and he's not telling you to kill somebody for money and he tells you to deliver a package, is he any less a mobster? Yeah. You know, that uh, you serve the same master in both white and dark. Um, that's what they have to pay attention to. But unfortunately, we don't have um, uh, the time tonight to go into it deeper about some of the clowns uh, that we can we can talk about, including uh, this person and, and this one here. Yeah, we don't want to give the face or the name too much Yeah, so attention. we'll uh, go ahead and uh, we'll probably have to wait. Uh, we'll definitely wait <laughs> yeah. for another time when we can organize those a little better. But you we never know. Have, we did have one question from Tony that was a really good one that I wanted oh, to yeah. ask real okay. quick. Before we take off and say sayonara, everyone. Tony mm-hmm. said, perchance on the Exilium Christianorum, should all the priests decide to leave the group and stop praying? What would happen to the group? What would the efficacy be? Do you think well, the people like would be under attack because the priests left? Oh, because the priests left? Yeah, because if the priests left, they walk away from the group and they stop praying. What would happen to all the laity that are praying? What would you well, suppose would happen due to, you know, the authority 
of the group and the authority that was established with the priests. I don't know when it's just praying. Um, it's if they're offering masses, that's different. When they're offering masses and uh, one person may be offering a rosary, that's going to pack more power. But my honest opinion, I think in some of these prayers, uh, if they're just saying prayers and it's a collective thing that's supposed to benefit everybody, I don't think there's going to be much more if they're saying the exact prayers if they're a priest and if they're not in the collective at all. But I know they're doing more than that. They're doing yeah. mass and everything else. And it's I, probably going to be better, but I can't think of the reason why on that particular case. Like collectively, how is it going to benefit everybody in protection and benefiting from doing the prayers if yes. the priests are just kind of dwindling down of, of uh, practicing that? I mean, it will help, it will hurt the cases, um, um, I suppose, but not the individuals praying. I don't think they're going to, as long as they've been replaced with someone just as uh, devout or pious, we can't assume all priests will. Usually when they're in that sense and they know spiritual warfare, you'll probably get a collective of people who are pretty pious and uh, into their faith, because that really shows your faith. I was kind of surprised to see Bishop, um, we were watching the, uh, we were talking about the other day, uh, Bishop Barron, you know, and he's an educator, and he's doing this World on Fire series and all that stuff, uh, that uh, he wasn't ready, and he's a bishop, mm -hmm. um, to uh, deal with uh, things, uh, you know, of what we yeah, even Yeah, he do. didn't want, he w openly stated mm -hmm. he did not want to talk about demons, and he was glad because he didn't want to have to deal with the demonic, and he was being very honest. He was like our priest yeah. that we love so was, much. I'm Father, glad he was honest. That just tells you he knows where he's at, Father and that's Dennis. important. Yeah, it is mm -hmm. very important. I just want to address Tony's question real quick. From what mm -hmm. I understand of the Auxilium Christian Orm, it was established by priests, for priests, and for all those deliverance people that work like Ken and I do in deliverance and exorcism, as well as people, lay people, to participate in praying mm -hmm. for those that are either um, under deliverance, that are working directly with deliverance, or the exorcist, or people, the deliverance ministers themselves, like Ken and I. Mm -hmm. And should the priest decide to walk away, the, eff the efficacy, um, I do not believe, would change. Because the priest stopped praying the prayers, or they stopped participating this could not affect the group as a whole because the group's goal is to pray for the priest that established it and for the laity and the deliverance members so if when you're looking at the purpose of something and you're looking at um, let's say you've got a pot on the stove and this it's for cooking and let's say you cut the handle off um, it, will the pot still work? Yes, it will. And I, I think it's, it's, it's something as simple as that. Because when we originally talked to Father Ripperger about this, um, when he, he was here uh, live uh, a few years ago when we recorded him and talked to, the, uh, to him about the group, he said there are strength in numbers. And Satan knows this. And that, that strength in numbers in the level of prayers that you storm heaven with and the number of people, everybody praying for those prayers is praying for every single person that it needs to be delivered, that um, needs protection, the priests that are actually doing the live deliverances, uh, Ken and I, if, if we're saying like the prayers of St. Mars over someone, that's what those prayers go to. So if you just, like I said, if you just remove the handle from the pot... I believe that the pot's still going to work. So, and that is, of course, that's my human reasoning, and that's kind of what I got from Father Ripperger. That let's say um, him and five other priests decide not to pray this week. The efficacy is still going to be there. You've got all those people, and they're praying that prayer, and they're storming heaven to pieces. So, um, I like the prayers. I love my prayers. I pray my prayers daily. I don't know how many years I've been doing it. What, three, four years since we met Father? Yeah, I think so. Um, it has given, it has given me a good insight into the darkness of my past and exposed a lot of things. So I have to thank God for those prayers in a, in a big, 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 big way. So we want to thank you guys. Yeah. Thank you for all your input. We really needed, you know, the, the visual, the audio. We needed just all the attention so that we could figure out what to do for um, changing because we've got some changes in the wind. We're thinking about going maybe from Thursday to Friday and we're thinking, you oh, know, yeah. about, you know, just, just how to present ourselves better. Maybe instead of 8 o'clock going to 8.30 or maybe running some commercials so we can get more people in. 
because the more the merrier. The more people we have in here, the more fun we have. Right, you guys? Right, yeah, the Tony? 830 Hi, thing Tess was Kelly. also an experiment. Aww. Oh, somebody just come in just a little late? Yeah, she's got a question, too. Um, I know of a teenage boy who's being tempted by a sexual demon. What are the best prayers for that boy and the parents to pray? Ken, I need you to hit this. The boy okay. has recently started going to weekly confession and wears a scapular of St. Benedict. Hmm. Scapular. Yeah, uh, okay, so she well, needs to know about the, the prayers to keep You can from find the prayers on... Um, okay, Testelli, listen, we've got prayers for you. Swordsofstmichael.org. Don't spell it with a S-T, Saint. Spell it S-A-I-N-T. Swords of St. Michael. That's S on the end of sword. Is swords. Swordsofstmichael.org. Go to the prayer slash solutions and use the pull-down menu and look for prayers for purity or something along those lines. Um, I, I probably could have been more specific because the mainstream is looking for succubus, incubus, or some of these things that are in, so, um, you know, more in the inside the church lingo or whatever. And uh, we're trying to make it uh, both mainstream and, and where people understand what it is inside the search. Here's, here's the really important ones, and if you have a, a young teenager and all that, the Three Hail Marys prayer, you can get attacked physically where you're, like, um, reacting your body's reacting and everything, and you're not even thinking about it, they can do that when they, especially when you give into it over a period of time. You can pray that off by saying, Oh, Mary, my mother, preser please preserve me from mortal sin this day. Say it three times and bless yourself with the holy water when you say it. And you're going to find that you can kill the thought. The only thing is, if you succumb to it as a person to the point where you uh, don't want to give it up, you like it, and that's what some succubus, incubus people do. They, I, they like that relationship. A little bit of them does, and if a little bit does, that could be a problem, and it won't work as well. And the second prayer, of course, if you uh, you know you can create a, uh, a devotion to Mary by doing a consecration to uh, the, the Immaculate Heart of Mary and the sa uh, Sacred Heart of Jesus, and do the whole prayer called the Three Hail Marys prayer that's on that page. Um, it has a, a one other prayer, in it, but I say I ask them to say the Rosary too. But mm -hmm. um, the three Hail Marys prayer, say it daily. If it's really a problem, do it morning, night, and then when you wake up in the middle of the night because they attack you in the middle of the night sometimes. And married guys can get this, and it's hard to say, but usually they have to feed it. Starts at dream stages, test the waters a little bit, and then they'll wake you up in the middle of the night with a desire for it, and they might try it supernaturally, like pulling the covers off your you know legs first or something yeah don't let it get any further once they start in the dreams start praying it off because you don't want it to build from there because they're trying to get at something mm -hmm. to keep you in that mortal sin anything to add yeah you know i, I please write this down i d i'm going to try and type it later to you you can send us a pm or put it in a comment have the parents, since the parents want to do some prayers too, have them invite the priest over and enthrone their house, okay? Yeah. Enthrone the house, have the priest go into the boy's room, because I, I have a, I have a feeling that this is something that um, this boy brought home from a friend, and that this is an invitation that has chased him from a friend, and it's probably something that, because see, we were talking about this the other night. Sometimes when, when um, as children, we're attacked by sexual demons, it's come through from one of our parents who this generational spirit is invitational. Yeah. Because I fought off sexual demons for years, and I have to tell you that is, this is going to be a fight for his life, even when he's married, because images, once you see something, you cannot unsee it. So, you know, the boy needs to practice custody the eyes. The parents need to do an enthronement. They need to um, talk to, like, can we do... We have our son do prayers for purity. You know, he says, you know, Holy Immaculate Virgin, you know, I, I commit myself to you. And I don't remember how the prayer goes, Ken. Mm -hmm. But they say purity prayers. Why? Because both of them are going to and want to be virgins until they get married. And that's an important mm -hmm. thing for this young man. It, it's almost impossible to do in today's society. Mm -hmm. Usually by age 13... Some form of sexual molestation has already occurred in public school. Grabbing, hitting, punching, kicking, raping, whatever has already occurred. So, you know, okay. the boy needs to be taken seriously. If he is ready to start praying, then a scapular is a good reminder. 
prayers need to be said every morning and every night. Oh, miraculous also, metal. he Put needs there, get the miraculous metal. Yes, he needs a um, devotion to his guardian angel. If you want to, I would be glad to mail you some prayers and some instructions for his parents and send him a couple of Saint Benedict medals. So if you can send us a PM later, I'd be glad to help you because this is scary when you have kids in public school. This is scary when you have a praying mm-hmm. family and you have things going on and you just don't know because you walk into Walmart and you see more body parts than you do on the six o'clock news and we have to teach our children look away don't look I mean you see women without bras without underwear and you have to tell your son look away or you have to jump in front of that child so he doesn't see it we can't protect them from everything so we must teach them to take custody we must teach them to look away and not give it attention same thing demonology 101 do not address it do not look at it do not engage with it because it's an invitation so you know get in touch with us more if you can so we'll Mm -hmm. be glad to help you and um, god bless you and like ken said find the prayers enthronement guardian Mm -hmm. angel he needs a relationship with his guardian angel because his friends aren't any good yeah last thing i'd want to add to that would be that uh, friends uh, although their you know friends are great, uh, but they they also will drag you to hell, and uh, and I'm talking about this because I told someone on the phone something that I've been saying for years and years, 20 years at least, and that is the top two things that we have to deal with that causes demonic activity, and the two of them together is like a match and a can a can of gasoline. Oh, you're going to say violent kung fu movies? No, violence is not the problem. It's sex outside of marriage. It goes to perversion so often, and movies and everything promote it. When you have sex and you have witchcraft, for example, or cult practices, you got the worst demons, the worst possessions. It's hard to get out because they invited in with that sin. And then what's standing there at the door when they do the witchcraft to open up that portal? The sex demon. Then it becomes an incubus, succubus. Uh, the it's not it's not like a curse. You can be cursed by a witch and get rid of it easier than you can when you curse yourself with that. Mm-hmm. The friends are bad because yes. they bring Playboy magazines, they get oh, porn, and they, they play them at their and houses. That's just, that's just light. I mean, right now they're doing, they're taking each other's Adderall. You know, they're popping pills. They're yeah. smoking a doob at the, at, at the bus stop, you know. Yeah. These kids are under so much pressure from so much bullying. And how do you tell your kid, okay, put down the phone, turn off all your stuff. You know, when you get home, you've got to have, you know, five hours of uh, free space. Yeah, not to do prayer for our children too. That's yes. on the side also. That's a, every parent's job. Yeah. Every parent. So. And you can you can create a devotion to Saint Joseph, uh, you know, as the father. He needs and, a relationship um, with his guardian angel mm-hmm. every morning and every night because his guardian angel will protect it's him. It's an uphill battle when they're and, and it's mostly because they're friends. They learn yes. all of that stuff from their friends and they get encouraged to do it. Remember, like someone was talking about shoplifting. Yes. That their friends got him to shoplift for the first time. Oh, you chicken. That kind of stuff. So you got to watch it. You know, it's like the uh, the good friends can yes. be good for you, but the bad ones are really bad. The bad ones will drag you right into that dream state. Mm-hmm. So on that, sorry we kept you so long, but we sure have enjoyed it. Never forget the battle has already been won, and we're here to help you fight the fight and win it right. So we are the real deal. Ken Deal, Fair Deal, OFS and OSDE, meaning that uh, um, we're with the Office of Spiritual Deliverance and Exorcism, and we like to keep it light, and we sure hope you enjoyed it tonight. Happy Labor Day. God bless you. Until next Thursday, we have Father Driscoll, and PhD. Ken, are we going to be here on uh, YouTube, or are we going to be on Facebook next Thursday, I don't 9 know, What do you think? I'm going to flip a coin. <laughs> We need to tell people because they're going to come here and they're going to look at it. You know, God I got bless it scheduled you, Cass. Here, so I contact we'll go, us if you need more help, okay? Well, well, Father, it's my Father Mike's already been played on the other channel, so I think we'll uh, we'll put him on uh, YouTube. Yeah, we're going to be at YouTube. Yeah, that's right Thursday here. night, 8 p.m. Central. There's a little tiny little bell. If you click on it, you'll get a notification that we're going to be live. Ken will be scheduling it. God bless you all. Thank you all, Tess, Ron, Anna, Jennifer, Tony, and uh, Michael. Thank you guys for joining. <laughs> us and yes yeah. we need we need Carol Merrill Ron with the new car uh, uh, door number one here <laughs> yeah <laughs> right Carol, we got somebody Sarah. needs to give us a new car oh my gosh that's so, funny. <laughs> so good night God bless and say your guardian angel prayers tonight kitties see Who's you dreams? guys next week same time same channel well next not, week not exactly Thursday not exactly Thursday Thursday Thursday, Thursday. eight o'clock central nine Eastern, night Orion six Pacific <laughs> the 
Real Deal TV show, copyright 2018, a Swords of St. Michael production. Any unauthorized duplication or rebroadcast or retransmission of this broadcast without the express written permission of the Swords of the Saint Network or that of Kenneth and Farrow's deal is strictly prohibited.